Hello and welcome to Etta Arlene's Spirit Cast. If you're new to this podcast, we like to talk about all things metaphysical, spiritual. We like to talk about tarot, astrology, magic, and anything else in that realm. For today's episode, we are talking about past lives and past life regression. I am finishing up a book by Dolores Cannon. Now, uh, you know who Dolores Cannon is because I have been talking about her like crazy. For all of you guys who don't know who she is, she does past life regression. Therapy. And, uh, I mean, she's passed away. Yeah, so she did. Past um, tense. But she, she, like, shared her knowledge with other people, so you can still get that style of therapy. And she has a ton of books about past life regression. And the book that I am reading is called The Three Waves of Volunteers and the New Earth. So, this book is... It basically talks about the whole idea of the waves of higher energies coming to the planet to lift the vibration in what some call the ascension. You know, people talk about indigo crystals, whatever. It's it's along those lines. So pretty much Dolores, she's done all these thousands of past life regressions on tons of people. And then suddenly she started getting these strange past life regressions where people had accounts of being on other planets, of being higher energies, uh, multi-dimensional, you know, multi-dimensional. There's even a person in there who talks about their life as a tree. Mm. And it's written so that's just her accounts. Like, it's not a story or anything. It's just, like, each one's, like, a mini story of that time. Because she recorded all of the past life regressions. She would just record them, like, document them. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, a compilation of all of these really weird past life regressions. Mm-hmm. And they it's all along the lines of these regressions basically saying that they were once some sort of higher energy and now they have chosen to come here to help lift the vibration of the planet for the new whatever. Yeah. Um, it's a really fun book, whether you subscribe to it or not. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you're definitely interested in that type of stuff. <laughs> oh, it's so interesting. It's pretty long, but I, like, blew through it. I, and I downloaded it on a whim. I downloaded it on my phone because I heard this, like, guy, somebody I was listening to, some podcast, somebody was talking about it, and I was like, what is he talking about? And she has a ton of books, but I just downloaded that one, and um, I, like, couldn't put it down. So it made me think of the times we did past life regression. Hey, guys, we just want to take a second to let you know where you can find us at. You can listen to our podcast on all major podcasting networks like Stitcher, iTunes, and more. You can also follow us on Instagram at Etta Arlene, on Twitter at EdPro underscore PGH, on Pinterest at Etta Arlene, on Tumblr at Etta Arlene, and you can go to our website to subscribe for some Reiki. Thanks for listening. So I would like to hear what your thoughts are on past life regression. I think that if you are called to do past life regression, that's probably something that you should do. I personally don't feel called to do it. I feel like my opinion, which might, you know, agree with, don't agree with, is that if you were meant to remember your past lives, then you would. Because what if you drudge up something that, like, I don't know, you were, had a a traumatic death or something crazy and you have to relive that. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily something that we're supposed to do all the time, but I understand that, like, there's soul contracts and sometimes you have to go through and clear out those and that m- what might require you to go and do this type of therapy um we have done it a couple times um i think it's interesting yeah, yeah we've done it um non like officially we we just basically took it upon ourselves to do guided meditation and then they sent around past lives and we were just like let's do it let's see where it takes us and it's interesting in the past I would have been all about past life regression. All about it. And you'd think after reading Dolores Cannon's book, I would be all about past life regression. Mm. And I'm kind of in alignment with the idea that if you are supposed to know your past life, it will come to you somehow easily. Like, And I don't mean that you're going to sleep and then like suddenly past life regress. But I mean, like the experience will open up to you easily, or maybe you will remember it. Like maybe something will happen and you'll have some sort of vision. So what I'm saying is maybe you've been thinking about it. You can't stop thinking about past life regression. And then you're walking down the street and you see there's like some sort of past life or something. something. Yeah. And then like, maybe it's like, yeah. Whenever it's like you're obsessively thinking about it. And there was a point in time where I was like all about past life regression. And then, after, especially after our Reiki 
I don't feel called to do it. But I know there's a lot of healing with past life regression. And that's why people like to do it because it's the idea that there's some sort of trauma or, as you mentioned, soul contract mm-hmm. or some kind of funky thing from a past clear. life. Yeah. And, of course, you know, it's interesting to think that you might do a past life regression and be on another planet because, hey, why not? And, like, what if you are one of these, these uh, aliens or what have yeah. you coming through? Yeah, being for Yeah, for lack of a better term. So, um... I think, yeah, I agree. I think if, if it's blatant and you keep on having synchronicities, then maybe that's something you need to act on. But for me personally, I, I'm i not going to pursue, like, the therapy, like, past life therapy, unless it's, like, straight up, like, divine intervention, like, this is exactly what you have to do, like, do it. Yes. Like, so I you... need to have, like, you know, complete evidence or something to, like, make me, like, push me to do it. I don't know. Do you think that... Um, since becoming Reiki masters, that maybe that has what maybe the attunement or something helped clear up somehow, like did something to like help heal because I know yeah. it's very healing whenever you practice Reiki and whatever. It's very you healing, and I we do I do send Reiki energy to my past to clear things. So I guess in some way it's kind of like that, but I'm not reliving it. But I'm just generally sending it to past, just the past, to clear anything that might be possibly there. So maybe that is what it is, because whenever we... Before we were Reiki Masters. Before we were Reiki Masters, that energy had not been dealt with. But after becoming attuned and doing our own sessions, and you're, I have done past, present, future Reiki. I do, though. Yeah, I do all the time. And so, listeners, that doesn't make you regress to a past life or take you magically to the future. What it does is it sends the energy to those instances to help heal. Yeah, because time's not linear. Yeah. So that might be why we don't have a strong <laughs> yeah. calling. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, we don't need to see it. But I had a past life experience, like a past life regression, and I, I did this meditation because she's like, do it, it's fun. <laughs> this is when we were, like, kind of, like, you know, tiptoeing into it, like dipping toe in. Yeah. And, but yeah, go, you can tell the story. It's funny. Um, so I'll tell you a story and then I'd love to hear any of your experiences. So whenever, um, she tells me this meditation and it, some sort of like healing thing and it was supposed to like make you close doors from the past. And she's like, yeah, this happened to me. That's really weird. And, and I don't even know if you remember what happened, but I remember whatever occurred for you made me want to do it. Because I was like, I want to know. I want to see this. Mm-hmm. So I um, get cozy, do this, like, hour-long meditation. And I don't know if it was something manifested from the subconscious. I am, I mean, because it was a past life regression, I'm thinking it was, like, past life regression. But whatever it was, it was really, like, made me upset. And it made me upset because I went back. So I'm an artist, and... Um, I went back in time and I was like a girl and I was this like painter and I painted in this, I don't know, some sort of like court setting or for some like rich people or something. And so I was like a a fairly successful painter for the time period being a woman. As a woman in that time period, I had like, I felt like I had a male advocate who was helping my career and he was some sort of high ranking. I don't know. He was special. He had, I don't know if he was like super rich or what his reasoning was, but I thought he was my friend as well. And in the past life regression, the scene I saw is that I was arguing with this man because he betrayed me. So not only was it that he betrayed my art and my career, but as a friend as well. It sounds like it's like, oh, that's not bad. It's not like you, you know, burn at a stake or something. But it made me upset because it affected me like emotionally. Like I felt like I was feeling that anger in the betrayal that that woman was feeling in my meditative state and the importance of her work and how everything hinged on. So maybe it was like the frustration that her being independence and her everything depended on him. And it almost made me wonder too, if maybe there was some sort of like more than friendship with the two of them. So it was like an even more of a sense of betrayal and it made me really upset. And I was like, that was day I decided I'm never doing past life regression ever again <laughs> because if that if that's bad can you imagine doing past life regression and it's like something horrendous you know I read a book in that book mm. Doreen or Dolores Cannon this girl talks about being in Egypt and she's like some wily like I don't know doing magic some mystic and the men are like no you can't do that they lock her ass in a tomb like a thing and put beetles on her and that's how she dies 
Oh, I do no. not want that. I do not want that. No, 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 no. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. More power to you. So, me getting into a little argument in my past life regression made me, like, upset, like, emotionally. <laughs> so, that, that guy was, like, a patron, kind of. Yeah, he was, like, a patron, but he was also my friend. There was some sort of connection. So, mm. it was more than a betrayal of my um, finances finances and my independence it was a betrayal of like a friendship and I was arguing and I remember I was like screaming there was like, another girl behind me and I'm there and I know I was doing well for myself because I was dressed like night like I was dressed nice so I don't know if like this person's you know you hear about like artists whose father was a famous painter and then they like teach their children and then you know I don't know if like I had a rel like if I was like a lineage of that or what the deal was like how I got to that point but like you said this person was like my patron and was also my advocate as a female artist Mm -hmm. and then they weren't for something they betrayed me somehow but it was like a personal and work-related betrayal maybe you had to experience that to to fix something in this lifetime like maybe that Mm -hmm. was like the point you had to remember to start doing art again or yeah I don't know it's interesting I instantly when you said that story I instantly thought of like um the renaissance or something yeah like you were in Italy or somewhere it felt like it was Europe like I felt like it was um Italy I didn't hear language it was like a sense of communication Mm -hmm. I didn't hear language and I am not a historian so I can't like pinpoint like oh this is the dress like the colors are very warm um Italy sounds like it could be Mm -hmm like a renaissance era Mm -hmm. i know the type of painting i was doing was um more realistic Mm -hmm. it was that along those lines of a maybe a renaissance era piece um i mean you know it just hit home like a connection of having that that type of vision and being like a female artist in this current state Mm -hmm. so maybe it was like maybe don't give up or i don't know maybe maybe i think things happen for a reason yeah. I think if you have had that come through, then that was probably, there's probably a reason. I remember I called you. I was so angry. You were like... pissed. <laughs> she called me up angry. Like, why would you make have me do that? I don't really remember my... <laughs> Yours was not... I remember you convinced me to do it. You told me how I can't remember awesome if it, Actually, your... I've done it a couple times. I, I did one where I was in the six, like the 50s and 60s and I was like a housewife, which aligns with some of the thoughts. Because like, I have a huge like... I don't know, affinity for, like, the 50s and 60s style and makeup and hair and, and just all that. And that is a sign of a past life. Yeah. Same thing with, like, I have always have a theory that, like, um, us and, like, our friends were all alive in, like, the French court and we all reunited again. Yeah. yeah. So, to catch, you know, catch them up on what you're talking about, there's, like, certain signs, I guess they say, of your, that you can tell from your current life from what your past life was so like you were saying if you have an affinity for certain time periods certain art styles music things like that um if you just have this desire to like wear certain things this you feel really connected with certain time period like garb almost like you miss it Mm -hmm. then that's like a sign that you might have lived in that past life also fears things that you are really afraid of could be a sign that that's how you had a traumatic experience with that. So if you're, like, extremely afraid of spiders, maybe you got bit by a spider in a past life or had some weird thing or, or fire or something weird like that. Also, they say scars on your body, like, birthmarks and stuff could be um, residuals from past lives, like, past life trauma. Mm-hmm. What are a couple other ones? I feel like I'm forgetting a couple. Oh, the friend group you mentioned. If you ever meet people and it's, like... You've known them forever. Yes, like, you you could go for, what, like, months while talking to that person, and then as soon as you get back to them, it's like nothing's changed. They say that you've known that person in past lives, like, over and over again. You've literally known them forever. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you meet somebody, you're like, God, you look so familiar. Yeah, that happened, that actually happened recently, but... I I love that idea about the past lives that, that you we have all lived past lives and we find each other. Oh, I love that. Too. I love that. Like that, that, yeah. that oh, I love that. And it's funny because like how we change. It's like everybody around us is going through similar change at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, all of our friends. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting to see how all that works. But it does. I love that. Like you can see, not see someone for a year, two years, and you see them again. And it's like nothing mm-hmm. ever changed. Like you always find them. It's yeah. like comforting. Or you're like, you. yeah, people always see finding these people. Knowing like it's really crazy. Yeah. To think about. 
It is. So, your past life, you were in the 50s. Did anything else happen? I was like a housewife, and it was like, it was in like this ranch style home, and I was just tending to the house, it seemed. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Oh, do you remember? So, we, um, we did, we like tarot. So, anyways, we did a tarot reading, and you did one with past life. Mm-hmm. And remember, it said, she said that you were, um, like a housewife from the 50s, mm-hmm. in that. That's creepy. It's crazy. There's something else we did, too, and it said the same exact thing. You were unhappy, though. It said that you were in, like, a, a weird marriage or something funny. I was in a weird marriage, weird... I was I was unhappy, and that's why in this lifetime I'm so driven to be independent and do whatever I want to do. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, there's such a push to do that and to do everything that I want to do. Like, write the books, mm-hmm. do the podcast, you know, make the candles, like, do what it... Chase your joy. Yeah. Okay, I feel like I lived a very stifled life. And that time period. And that's why I'm like, fuck it. Fuck the system. Fuck traditional living. Like, As we talk, I'm realizing that we have definitely been doing past life. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, yeah, we've definitely been doing past life healing. (laughs) Well, because we've been meditating and doing this stuff for a long time. We call it um, spirit college. Like, it's been... It's spirit college, and it's always more adding more to the studies every yeah. day. You know, taking on numerology now and other things that we'll talk oh, about later. Gosh, I you know I'm not going to talk about we had we did um this is just a little hint of what we're going to talk about in a different episode, but we did an akashic record thing mm-hmm. yesterday, and one of the experiences I had in the akashic record said to keep learning and practice. That's something that always comes through yeah. in all my meditate. Like, a lot of messages come through like that. To keep on practicing and let go and just keep on learning. Keep on learning. Keep on reading. And, you know, when you get those kinds of messages, you have to act on them. It's how you strengthen your intuition and, and strengthen that connection. But, yeah, the Akashic Records, that's something we'll talk about another time. Because yeah. we're not there uh, yet. I think you can do past life stuff in your Akashic Records. And we have See, done past, I guess we have done past no, life stuff. We have. We did a past life meditation with a friend recently. So here's something. Um, this reminded me of that. So we did the past life thing with our friend because he really wanted to do it and we wanted to be like supportive and nothing came through for us. It was funny because as part of this meditation, we did Brian Weiss. Yeah, I think it was um, Brian Weiss. He talks about you're going down the stairs and... I'm going down the stairs and my clothes started to change the way they looked in that art renaissance style. Yeah, we'll call it one. renaissance. And my clothes started changing in my head. I thought, oh no, we're not doing this. And then it just went black and I like went to this meditative trance as opposed to a past life style trance. We were talking about that because you didn't pick anything up either. And we were thinking in Dolores Cannon, she talks about how sometimes your higher self chooses not to allow those memories that come through because they're not necessary anymore. Yeah. And I, cause I went down the stairs and then I was out like a light. It was like someone just snapped their fingers yeah. and it was just it. We, <laughs> we did, we did three of these past life regressions and healings and I think that was too much. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's way too much. We did way too much energy work that day and, uh, it was a lot, but I, I do feel a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe. Whatever it, if we did, if I did, like, you know, do, do the past life stuff, I wasn't meant to remember it yeah. this time around because I am supposed to focus on this lifetime and, like, you know, the present moment yeah. and not worry about the past or the future and just live now. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean... But if you're called to it, why yeah, not? Yeah, I think you should. You know, if you are feel like you really want to know, do it. But you can't be upset if nothing comes through. Uh, sometimes people want things so much that they actually end up blocking it from happening. So that could just be it, that you are just so excited about doing past life regression that you block that from happening. Or you're not meant to know that at that moment. I don't think I was meant to know because I wasn't, I was neutral. I wasn't excited and not, I wasn't against it and I wasn't for it. I was just there. Yeah, I know for a fact I wasn't. My higher self was probably like, we're not doing this. Because I had that thought. I was like, we're not doing this. And it's probably because I got so upset from that one time and they were like, she can't handle this right now. (laughs) Yeah, I thought mine was just like, do-do-do when I did mine. I was just in the housewife. And that like, because right before we did those past life regression meditations, we did, we got those readings done about the past life and that aligned perfectly with that. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. You know what I love to read about? I, I find it so interesting. We actually had talked about this a long time ago. Um, 
it's the uh, the group past life stuff, like where groups of people will remember the same thing. Mm. Was it the Cathars? Remember? It was the Cathars, yeah. Long story short, this dude, he's like a therapist or something, and he starts, he's doing a, I, I don't know, hypnosis. Oh yeah, it was hypnotherapy. Um, and he starts getting these people like coming through who are remembering like the same life. It was like in detail, and they were able to find like, I, I guess evidence and stuff like some of the stuff that the um, participants were saying they were able to find like historical evidence to like match it up years later mm. and the group ones are always interesting because a group having the same like how does that happen like you're all isolated you know you're doing this hypnosis separately but then you all have the same um, memories is interesting to me it was interesting weren't they all in the same area too yeah like they were the same all, yeah. town yeah like that's interesting i wonder if there's more there has to be more cases like that we just I haven't know, looked it up there has to because i fell off the past life thing i did the... but i agree i think it's because we're reiki masters and we um let the reiki energy fix fix that shit mm-hmm. without having to experience it <laughs> without having to ex- relive it again yeah and when you do like i think when you do the energy works i think you do get like fragments of it mm-hmm. of the feeling and like emotions and like the healing crisis oh gosh but i don't think you have to necessarily like relive that movie Mm -hmm. and get that visuals again so it's interesting yeah yeah i mean i don't get excessive visuals whenever i know some people get a lot of visuals when they like meditate and what have you i don't but every time i do they always stand out because i'm like i don't get them so when i get them i'm like oh this is what i saw (laughs) guys guys (laughs) My, mine are always like really bizarre. You get visuals. I do. Your Reiki, our, okay, so our, our Reiki attunement Reiki attunements are um, a doozy for some people. For us, they were for everybody. Yeah, and we both had a somewhat similar experience. And I didn't get any visuals. I had an experience, but she had visuals, which I think is so cool. You hear about that? Some people talk about like seeing lights and going places. Yeah, I had visuals. I went places, um, which was really cool. And I think it was like kind of like the fast forward of things too it was really interesting what did it look like um i did i saw c- colors a lot of colors um and then like just certain things just like certain visuals certain moments of things like that were like seemed like they were like clearing it out a little bit like we gotta start working on this woman now because she's a hot mess <laughs> oh, you're not a hot mess. Um, i'm not a hot mess at all but I feel like my higher self and guides and the Reiki, you know. It was like sorting things out. I think out. it was sorting. I think it was sorting and like compart- compartmentalizing mm. things to work on. And I think it was bringing stuff to the surface as well. And obviously like the chakras and stuff like that. Like some, it was clearly identifying which chakras were mm-hmm. I needed to work on and what they were really working on at that time. Which is really cool. It was, yeah. it was very interesting. It was funny. One of the things that we we're joking is that there wasn't a lot of literature online up from people and their experiences for whatever reasons one may have because it is very personal but it was really something else for us and our um teacher she was very like oh it's gonna be like this way very like it's just different for everybody like who knows (laughs) like not who knows but just very made it very pleasant and we didn't realize how much of a physical thing it would be we weren't going and thinking what, what way it turned out to be, I think. Yeah. I think it's oh. why it's important sometimes for you to, to have, like, a person in, like, when you, if you're learning to do Reiki and to have that physical person there like, guiding you. I don't have anything else about past life stuff. Um, do you have anything else you want to say before I say goodbye to everyone? Thanks for listening to this podcast. It was short and sweet. So at the end of every episode, we like to send out distant Reiki to our listeners who are open to receiving. The music will change. We recommend that you do not operate any vehicles. Do not, you know, drive a car, do anything that could hurt someone. Sit back, relax, let the energy flow to you. You can fast forward to this and listen to this Reiki anytime. Mm. You will still get it. You know, transcend time, space, reality. When the music stops at the end, your Reiki session is over. If you would like to learn more about Reiki, please go to edarlene.com slash Reiki. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.